welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another edition of Press Row. Joined by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Big football game again this week, week seven, highlighted by a marquee matchup in the MAC. Coldwater Marion, two undefeateds, two state champs. Who's got the edge? The winner of the 50 50. <laughs> That's the real winner of the game, right? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what game. I was at a game a couple of weeks ago, and the 50 50 winner was only like 400 bucks, and somebody was scoffing at that. I believe that. Yeah, they're used to bigger pots around uh, the MAC, especially at Coldwater and Marion local games. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't say that I've been able to watch these teams and break it down position by position, but it just feels like Marion local's playing better as this season has progressed. I believe the game's at Marion local yeah. as well. I think that favors them. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a, a great game, but I feel like Marion's had a better season, and uh, I'd have to go with them. I can help quantify that for you. Now, yeah. I'm not, I've never been a big believer in looking at what common, you've done against common opponents. But sure. when you've played three common opponents, there are some trends there. Marin Local has beaten St. Henry, Minster, and Anna by an average of 30 points. Coldwater mm -hmm. beat those three schools by an average of 15 points. Yeah. Now, Marin Local is getting all three of those schools after Coldwater's already beaten them. Maybe the Cavaliers softened them up a little bit and allowed mm -hmm. Marin Local to roll up some more points on them. Also, Coldwater is playing a lot of those games without a fully healthy Brody Hoying. Right. Hoying seems to be healthy. I think if Hoying is 100%, I like Coldwater's chances to get the victory in Maria Stein. Well, I think, I think it all revolves around that. If, if he's fully healthy, back to where he can be, I think it's an absolute toss-up. And but he can make a bigger impact defensively, defensively than offensively. Yeah. I think it's toss-up, guys. I, I, I can't pick a horse in that race yet. I mean, it's going to be a very good game. Might be game of the year in the MAC when it comes down to it. But game uh, of the year in the state. Yeah, game, game of the week in the state. Maybe game of the year. But I quantify it with this. Chances are we're going to see both teams in Columbus that first weekend in December. <laughs> yeah. I was going to look at common opponents like you. And just another, it's tough to take this statistic because Brody Hoyne was out for two games. But Coldwater's averaging 45 points a game on offense while or excuse me, Marion Local's averaging 45 points a game on offense, while Coldwater's averaging only 29. Both their defenses are allowing less than 10. So we take it that way. It seems like Marion Local should be better on offense and get the win, but that's, you know, obviously they don't play the game through the statistics. They play and that's the what football's yeah. all about. Yeah. Also, Coldwater has played their two non-conference games. Coldwater's non-conference games were much, much better. Tougher. Yeah, much tougher, right. So yeah. that's another good point. So, if you look at stats, though, Marion Local's defensive numbers are very impressive. strong. Yeah. And yeah. I really didn't realize it till last week. I looked at their uh, total defense is like 120 yards a game. Yeah. They are really getting it done defensively. I think this will be a fairly low-scoring game. I think both teams defensively have been very good. These are games that have been 17-10, 21-17, right. 21-14, 28-21, stuff like that. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that's the same. Low-scoring, defensive-oriented, um, but now, one team ago, will get in the 20s. Now, we were thinking the same thing, except Marin Local had questioned that quarterback, and the Flyers blew out the Cavaliers. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Did I Rethman remember. start in that game? Rethman, did, Rethman was the quarterback because Berkey got hurt the week prior. If I that was correctly. a huge surprise, not that they would win, but the but way they, the way really they blew cold water out. And, you know, I suppose it could happen again this year, and it could go the other way for all we know. But these are two great teams. And like Aaron said, they'll almost certainly we can pencil these guys in for a deep playoff run. I don't know how you feel. I, I'm, I'm kind of glad they aren't in the same division mm -hmm. so they don't have to I play know. again. I think that's uh, good. A lot of times these teams that are in the same conference would later meet in the playoffs, maybe even in the second round. So uh, knowing that they won't maybe gives this game a little bit more of an edge. Mm -hmm. All right, they could both be state champions just like last year. So right. after yep. this week, there'll be one undefeated left in the MAC. Right now there's one undefeated left in the Western Buckeye League. It's Wapakoneta. Big game against OG this week. Do you think the Redskins are on upset alert? I guarantee they're on upset yeah. alert because nobody looks past Ottawa Glendorf. Uh, that loss to Kenton last week doesn't mean a thing. And you know you got to bring it when you play uh, Ottawa Glendorf. Now, does that mean I think that OG's going to pull the upset? Not necessarily, but I don't think Wapakoneta is going to look past OG because I think they've been looking to OG for a couple of weeks now. I, you look at last week's game to go back with Kenton, it was a 7-3 ball game at halftime. Mm -hmm. I mean, very much a close game that OG was in. It's just Kenton was able to capitalize on mistakes that were made in the second half and were able to put points on the board, and that's what you have to do when you go to Ottawa and play over there against the Titans at their house. You've got to put points on the board, and you've got to do it, and you've got to separate yourself away 
from the Titan team because they are very good. They're as fundamentally sound as any team in the area. They're as well coached as any team in the area. And I can guarantee you, Travis Moyer and his team are not looking past the Titans. And I would say very much it's upset alert because anything could happen in this one this Friday. See, I, if I'm Travis Moyer, I'm concerned about my team. Having looked at OG the entire season, going, this is the team we have to prepare for. All of a sudden, they lose. Are they no longer as focused on OG because next week is St. Mary's and Doug Fry? Could be. But and they've I, had know. that circled on their calendar since February. Yeah, I, I, that could be a factor, but I think they've really been keying on this OG game as the one that'll make the big difference as far as being WBL champs. This is I, the driver's seat game. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think Wapkaneta will be prepared. So, another undefeated team, Lima Senior 6 0. Can anyone beat the Spartans? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess Good the, question. four no, more no, teams get a shot, or five, <laughs> or six, or seven. Uh, you know, I, I would certainly would never say somebody can't be beaten. I, I think if you're going to beat them, you have to create a couple turnovers. You can't just let them march down the field all the time and try to outscore them. That's not going to work. And, and I don't think you're going to, quote, unquote, rein them in or slow them down. you got to turn them over. That's the way you beat these types of offenses that just move up and down the field, well, you got to turn this. it over. If you if you do turn them over, you've got to take advantage. Oh of sure, it. Finley yeah. could not do that third quarter. Had opportunity, to right. perhaps get back into the game. Right. Fumbled a punt, return, and get, Finley recovered it. Lyman Senior came with a blocked field goal to grab the momentum back. So if you do get those turnovers, you've got to take advantage of them. I think the other thing, guys, is when you look at this Lima Senior team, another way to beat them is to beat them. You're going to have to beat them up. You're going to have to be the more physical team. Of the two, their defense I, is very physical. Yeah. Exactly, because their defense is really physical. They'll smack you in the mouth. You've got to smack them in the mouth as well in order to, I think, to get a win. But I, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting that the thoughts of them running the table. But I want to flip. I mean, the, the way the schedule lays out at St. John's this week, home for a one in five clay team, yep. host Toledo Central Catholic, which right now that's looking to be the big game, and then week ten a road trip back up to Whitmer. I'll tell you what, though, guys, flipping off of um, Lima Senior for a minute. Is anybody going to beat Spencerville? <laughs> That's a good question, too. Is Zach Oki one of the best backs do. in the area? They got Crestview and Jefferson yet to go. They still have that rivalry game with Jefferson, yes, but my goodness. Huge the win for the The way they were able to control week. the clock against LCC was what impressed me the most, which that's something they, that's been their MO all season. When you've got a ground attack like they have, control the clock. You keep the ball away from a high-scoring offense like LCC can be. That's half the battle right there. Here's another thing that stood out most from that game for me, having been there and having called that game. 29 yards rushing was all they allowed LCC. I think Spencerville's defense obviously stepped up is what you're getting to, yep. and I think that was important for them because earlier in the year maybe the defense wasn't as good as they needed it to be, and I think this is a real litmus test. And the, the way they were able to hold LCC down certainly didn't shut them out or anything, but played very well against a proven offensive team. Uh, I think is a good indicator for Spencerville that this is a team maybe that can run the table or at least win the NWC and make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah, impressed by the way Logan Vandermark really controls the middle of the field as a linebacker for Spencerville. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah, de great defense, and they've got a good running game, control the clock. That's a good formula for success. So Spencerville, obviously in the NWC, and the NWC has two or three teams that I think can definitely you can pencil in for the playoffs. Which conference is going to have the most teams represented in the postseason? Wow. Well, That's... you know, Todd kind of touched upon Coldwater and Marin Local won't be able to meet each other up in the postseason because they're in the different divisions. Right. You look at the BVC, you look at region, I believe it's 24. You could have basically – an all BVC right. yeah. round robin. You know, I was going to say region. the BVC with, with LB in region in Division Five. Right. Right. So, right now, I mean, the BVC's got five teams in the Max got six. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be one of those. And there, the five there aren't or six a whole range. lot of bubble teams in the, those groupings. Yeah, Maybe they the Mac would get in another team. I mean, Ann and St. Henry right now are 11 and 12. PG is 12. So, I mean, you're looking at a pretty solid group there for those two conferences. Yeah, I think that's it's going to be one of those, or they'll both have five, right. something like that, or six. It, it, it's funny how the regions work out sometimes, and you get one school like Coldwater in the MAC, Liberty Benton in the BVC that are in the biggest of those schools. But and in they, the same region, by the way, too, Todd. Yeah, he'll be yeah. in Coldwater in the same region, but they win enough games against smaller schools to still get in the playoffs. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be one of those two leagues. 
What do you think the Western Buckeye League gets? Three or four? Could could they sneak a fourth in? Uh, they might be hard pressed. They to get might three. get two. You think? Maybe three. I was gonna say maybe three at max. Yeah. I was thinking definitely Kenton Wapak and OG, but OG OG's is, struggling in the, in the OG's rankings. OG's a bubble. Yeah. yeah. Even though they moved down to five. Kenton, Kenton has moved up with yeah. their with right. their play the last couple weeks. That has helped them. So if you're if you're a Kenton team. You just got to, just in the words of the late Al Davis, just win, baby. Well, right <laughs> no now. No white jumpsuits, please, though. Yes. Well, they got the red jumpsuits in Kenton. But yes. right now, Kenton <laughs> would host Galleon, a rematch of last year's Week 11. Nothing's changed, but a whole lot has changed between those two schools. Oh, yeah. All right, well, moving on to the NFL. Browns said they made their way into the NFL records books this yeah. past week. 25 points. And actually a positive a record. record. In a very positive yeah. way. They, it was the largest comeback on the road in NFL history, and the Browns did it making up 25 points and are they for real like I, their their games have been decided by a total of eight points total in four games they're two and two they're in last place so you're are they, they good could just as easily be four and oh as zero oh and four yes as two and two right well you know i i but would are they say good is the question. well you see those are two different questions now are they for real well sure they're i think they're as legitimate an nfl team as they've been in a while i think their ability to make adjustments with that coaching staff come out in second halves and play better, makes them, quote-unquote, for real. Now, are they good? I don't know if I'm there yet, but they're a team that can approach a 500 season, I think, without really reaching here. They're a last-second field goal away in week three from being a 3-1 and one team, you know, but that's, you know, theoretical. Right. I, they, they could contend for seven, eight. I don't, see, I don't see them being above 500 just with the division, obviously – Cincinnati still the favorite, but you know, as we tape this word out of Cincinnati this morning was that AJ Green was carted out of practice today with a toe injury or something. So who knows how that's going to transpire and what the prognosis prognosis is for him. But I still think you've got Cincinnati. You've still got Baltimore. You can't you can't count on Pittsburgh either. Do you think we'll see Johnny Manziel at any point starting a full game this year? Not unless right Hoyer now, no. gets hurt. I, right think now, no. I think Hoyer gets hurt at some point. Well, it's, it's a possibility, obviously. He's Didn't shown a proclivity. Right. right. But, yeah, I, there's no reason to start Manziel now, even, even if they lose a couple of games. I think the die has been cast that Hoyer can lead this team and can win on this team. I think and, we will see Manziel because at some point you've got to figure out what you've got. And if Hoyer really is your guy going forward, you need to start showcasing Manziel to try and trade him. Well, that, but that you, hit on a, is, you hit on something big that I thought of as well. It would not surprise me one bit if Manziel was traded after this season. Yeah, I don't think you are looking to do that for a while yet. Uh, you know, you've got to be obviously out of the playoffs or Hoyer gets dinged up or something to really do that. But, I, you know, I think the Browns are a legitimate team. And you know, it, it's got to be a good feeling for Browns fans to have the confidence that they're – coaching staff's doing something right because <laughs> you know falling behind is not how you want to do it but their ability to get things fixed at the break and come out and change games around is not something to be taken for granted yeah well, i don't think they're the la laughing stock we thought they were when antonio brown drop kicked the punter <laughs> right and they're exactly. not the laughing stock of the nfl so. mr miyagi was proud of that yeah. <laughs> so with that that's going to do it for this edition of press row thanks for joining us enjoy your weekend and football friday and other sports on saturday we'll see you next time